We also have the ability to upgrade your fuel side controller remotely. We also have the ability to back up the configuration and make changes to your fuel side controller through the application. That's going to be handled through the settings tab and the sync button here. So when you select sync, now we're going to have our activity. We're going to be able to read our fuel side controller settings. We're going to be able to read the site settings and the global settings. And then when we make changes in the application, we could then come back and send those changes back down to the fuel site controller. In essence, writing over the top of your fuel site controller's configuration. So you want to be very careful here when making any changes uh, to the application if you're not familiar with how this functionality works. Uh, you'll also want to ensure that before you make any send changes, you do also read the site settings and the global settings. This is just going to ensure that there is a backup of your fuel site controller's configuration in the in the application so that you don't have to worry about erasing something uh, on your site. If we're going to upgrade your fuel site controller, you'll first want to read the site settings and global settings, but you'll go ahead and click the upgrade button. You're going to select the available versions that are online and you could simply click upgrade. That's going to push the firmware update to that fuel site controller remotely. We also have the ability to reset the system, set open and close system times to uh, do a system start or to change the passwords as well for your fuel site controller on this page. Under job status, the job status tab is going to give you the ability to view those active uh, changes that you've made and push down to the fuel site controller. So for example, if you're doing a FSC upgrade and it's pushing the firmware update to the fuel site controller, here's where you would go to see when that was done. Uh, you should see a success message uh, when those big tasks get completed. Jumping into the sites tab, here we have the ability to change your site specific settings um, as well as configure things on the at a site level in the application. You'll also see the status of your site and whether it's currently running or not running. And you have the ability to do other functionality on the site. So for example, if you want to edit the changes on your site, you could just simply hit the edit button. We have a resend card option here. So when your site gets created for the first time, if your fuel site controller is new and doesn't currently have cards, then we would go ahead and resend those cards and we would use this resend functionality right here. We also have a start and stop option. The start and stop option is going to basically pause the site syncing that happens all the time to allow you to terminal into the fuel site controller to make changes manually on the controller if needed. Uh, to start and stop, you simply just select this and then it'll give you a warning. Do you want to go ahead and start again? You just say OK. Um, this is going to allow you to once again terminal in uh, without basically you're interrupting the sync process at that point to make fuel site controller level changes. Go ahead and hit edit site to make changes to the site details. So we're going to go ahead in this case uh, we're going to hit the controller option. Here we have our communication method for the fuel site controller as well as our passwords to log into that fuel site controller. If those passwords change, this is where you would go to go ahead and edit those uh, those controller configurations. Jumping over to the tanks, uh, the tanks and the pumps um, are not necessarily required, but you will want to go ahead and add them uh, so that the software uh, you can use the software to its greatest ability. Uh, if you do not configure the tanks and the pumps in here, then certain features like the pricing tool will not show up correctly. So you'll want to go ahead and select your tanks and then add the tanks in here. It's real simple to add. You would just select your tank. You would give it a uh, product type that it's being dispensed and then you would hit save. Uh, once you save those tank configurations, you will see them in the added tanks option here. The pumps, same thing. Uh, you can come in here and define your pumps uh, and you can see your added pumps uh, from the added pump controller options here. Same thing here. So this is going to show us our pumps and our tanks uh, all in these uh, these options. This is just going to allow you to use other features uh, within the application. Uh, if you needed to change anything like the receipt or the prompts, uh, you know, display messages, 
uh, all of these options are available to you. Uh, once again, you'll just want to make sure that you read the site specific settings uh, from that sync tab before you push any of these changes back down to your fuel site controller. Other than the sites tab, we have an organization. So the organizations tab is going to allow you to make global changes to all of your sites. Um, so these are going to be things like your product types, your product restrictions, things that are defined on a global scale. Um, so here we're going to have our ability to use gallons, liters, quarts, uh, your fuel types. So this is going to be the list of products that you're currently dispensing. Uh, so you'll want to make sure that this matches what your fuel site controller is configured as. This is going to allow the application to understand the transactions that are being synced and what fuel types you're dispensing on site. Jumping over to restrictions, here's the same thing. We're going to be defining our list of product restrictions and quantity restrictions. We're going to want to make sure that those restrictions are configured uh, on the fuel site controller in the same manner so that the application understands what, what restriction codes we're sending over when we create a new card with restrictions. One important feature of the cloud application that you're going to want to configure is to define the card record. This should be done during the onboarding process, but just so you get an understanding of what it does and how it might affect your application, we'll go over it here briefly. Uh, we are here, we're defining what kind of cards we're accepting in the system, whether we're going to be using single card system entry or whether we're going to be using a dual card entry. So single card would be if you're only using one card to authorize a transaction. Dual card uh, or dual entry system would be for using driver and vehicle combination cards. So we have two cards. One might be physical and one might be a keyboard entry, or they might be both keyboard entry or both physical. Um, but here we're basically just defining, are we doing a dual card entry system or not? And if we are doing a dual card entry system, we are going to be provided with a few options. These options are going to be to understand if we're using accounts on the fuel site controller and if we're going to be restricting cards based on the account that they're in or if we're going to allow cross fueling amongst different accounts. So, for example, if we select driver and vehicle tracking non restricted, this means we are not using accounts on the fuel site controller. So when we add the cards to the system, we add them in a particular account, but the account data is going to be ignored on the controller level. That means we're basically going to allow all the vehicles to cross fuel and they're not being restricted in any way. Uh, as long as they're valid cards, they're going to be able to authorize fuel. Since we're not sending the accounts over, we need to define in the application what, what uh, the, the transaction is going to get linked to, what account that transaction is going to get linked to. So we can do that here by selecting if we're going to use a driver specific account or a vehicle specific account. So when the transactions get imported into the application, if they're associated to a vehicle specific account, then those accounts for all the transactions will be linked to that vehicle. If we do the driver and vehicle tracking restricted, this means that the fuel site controller is going to accept that account data and it is going to restrict drivers and vehicles and they need to be in the same account. But it does allow you to use a global account, which is no no account associated uh, option, which will allow you to have a global driver or global vehicle that can cross fuel. So they will be restricted in the sense that the driver and vehicle have to be in the same account, but you do have that ability to have a global card, which will define that restriction. If we're doing uh, driver and vehicle tracking most restricted, that means that uh, no cross fueling is allowed. They have to be drivers and vehicles in the same account uh, or they will not be authorized to fuel. We do have the ability to use a single card in a dual card entry. So if you want to use all three card types, single driver and vehicle, you could simply check this box and it will allow you to create single cards as well. One thing we didn't note up top, if you're using a single card entry system, 
you can define the cards as all driver cards or all vehicle cards, or you can do a combination of two. But when you create a new card, it's still going to be considered a single card. Down here at the bottom, we have the ability to use any of these uh, checkboxes to say these are the features we want to turn on on our card file. So the accounts, expiration, allocation, any sort of product restriction, quantity restriction, um, these can all be configured on a card level. If we turn any of these features off, then when we create a new card, those features will not be a selectable option in the card creation process. So these are going to basically allow you to define which features you want to use, and then the features that you don't want to use, we can simply leave them unchecked, and then they're not going to show up, and you're going to have a faster card creation process because we're basically optimizing. You're only going to see the things that you need. You're not going to see anything additional. You're not going to have to worry about anything additional. So we'll want to make sure that we go in here and configure this uh, to uh, match your existing fuel site controller uh, if it's already an existing site or to set it up in a way that's going to make sense for your particular site and how you're going to use the application. So for example, if we didn't want to have pin numbers on any of our cards, we could just turn this feature off and hit save. And then when we create a new card, the pin option is not going to be there any longer. Um, and the same process for any of these others. If you wanted to disable them, then you can come in here and just uncheck your box. Let's scroll back up to the, the other options here. So, you know, we also have some other uh, organization settings. So if you want to define your transaction header uh, on the receipt or define the receipt body, you could do so here. Uh, so if you needed anything to be changed, uh, then this is where you would go. User strings just gives you the ability when you create a card or an account, there's some user defined fields here. You can list these and change this font to display whatever you'd like it to show up in that uh, in, in this case for the card. Um, so if you wanted to track additional data, say like cell phone number or last four of the social or some other data that's not really required for fueling, but is something you want to keep track of, of at a card level, then you can simply just define these. And when you go to the cards menu there, you're going to see these card user defined one and user defined two fields. But if you change them here, it will display as whatever you save in this uh, user strings field. Going over pricing, if we select pricing, here's where uh, the tanks and the pumps are required in order to change the price. So if you want to set the price at the time of fuel, then you can simply come in here, select which product you would like the price to change, put in whatever price that you would like it to be, and then hit send price. That's going to send the price down to the fuel site controller so that from now on, at, at any transactions that take place after that, you'll have that particular price for that particular product. You'll want to do this um, for all of the, uh, the product types you would like to change. Fuel zones allows you to define which sites the cards are going to go to. Um, if you don't use zones, then you'll need to select that all cards can be available at all sites. If you want to create a zone here, you're basically going to say, I want to create a zone for this site and this site only, and you could define which sites you would like to show up in that list. When you create a card, you're going to basically pick which sites do you want these cards to go to, and that's based on this zone. All you need to do is give it a name, select which sites you would like to be in that zone name, and then hit save. At a card level, if you had a zone that was sites one, two, and three only, um, and that was for a particular group of sites that was located in the same region, then you could create cards that only go to all three of those sites, just by simply selecting that zone in the drop-down list on the card creation process. And that's pretty much all we have uh, as far as the, the tabs across the top here. Uh, one thing to note, you do have the ability to see active alerts up here on the top. Uh, this little notification bell will also show you incoming alerts on your site so that you can play that proactive role in, in taking care of those alerts as soon as they happen. If you're in the application when one of those alerts goes out, uh, you would also be notified via the text message or email if you have those notifications set up. This completes the DX Fleet interface and configuration video. 
If you have any questions or need help, please contact our tech support via phone or email.